Alfa Romeo is undoubtedly making a pretty big comeback here in the United States and the Julie is one of the first to start it off. 2020 marks the fourth model year for the Julia, and it sees some welcome updates. So let's see what the 2020 Julia is all about here in this beautifully optioned TI Sport trim level. Okay, so before we get started with all the details of this vehicle, I like to show you guys the window sticker. Just as a sort of disclaimer and to show you how they set it up here with Alpha. Now over here we have our base price and all of our standard equipment and right down here starts our optional equipment which I would like to highlight. This car has the optional paint color Verde Visconti which is an absolutely beautiful color and that is the sole reason why I chose to do this particular car. This car also is nicely optioned with the TI Sport all-wheel drive package which gives you some larger wheels, the colored brake calipers. You can choose between a couple different colors uh, on, in the brake calipers as well. We also have the active driver's assist package for the TI Sport, which has the navigation, uh, various um, safety warnings and, and uh, things like the adaptive cruise control, automatic dimming mirrors, so that's a pretty large package coming in at $3,250. We also have the TI Extended Leather Package, which you can see has the leather dash and upper doors. We also have the Sport Performance Package, which has the pretty cool um, active suspension and limited slip rear differential. Uh, we also have the dual pane sunroof, the 14 speaker Harman Kardon sound system, and the optional uh, 19 inch uh, dark finished wheels. We have a destination charge of $1,295 and a total sticker price of $56,745. So this is pretty much on the top end, pretty much fully optioned out uh, Julia here. So that's pretty much what you're gonna be paying for the top of the line car. We have some warranty coverage as well as fuel mileage up here and all of our parts content down here. I'm gonna zoom in over there because I know some of you like to see that. But that pretty much does it for the window sticker. Now let's get into it. Now taking a walk around the side, as you heard me mention earlier, the color we're working with today is the Verde Visconti. And you can really see that beautiful dark green in the sunlight now that it's out. It is one of 14 total color options for the Julia, and the wheelbase stands at 111 inches. Okay, so now that we're around back to the Julia, we can discuss our drivetrain options. Now, the Julia will come standard with rear wheel drive, which is pretty awesome. However, this one being up here in the Northeast, we do have that optional Q4 all wheel drive for a little bit of an extra cost. You can see the little badge right there on the trunk lid. Okay, so the details on the exterior of the 2020 Alfa Romeo Giulia. We have the signature triangular grille for the Alfa Romeos, as you can see. We have the mesh on the inside, then some nice bright work around the outside with your logo up top. We also have these nice headlights up here, which are the... Um, a single bulb used for both your high and low beams and it is an HID powered bulb. Your turn signals and daytime running lights are both LED powered. We also have some nice pretty large air intakes down below with the beautiful body colored bumpers and the uh, parking sensors that go all the way across the front bumper. We also have one more sensor down below here for your adaptive cruise control and forward um, collision assistant. Alright, so taking a look up at the hood, we have some pretty prominent creases that go right on down into the triangular Alfa Romeo grille there, which is pretty neat. And if we take a look down below, we have one of four wheel options for the Julia. 
and it is be these beautiful dark painted 19 inch uh, five hole wheels our tires measure 22540 up front and we have four piston brake calipers now speaking of your brake calipers you could choose between a black a yellow or a red brake caliper so they give you that pretty neat option there Taking a look at our side mirrors, you can see that beautiful Verde Visconti sparkling in the sunlight and you can also see that you have the blind spot warning as well as your LED turn signal indicator on there. Taking a look back here, we have the smart key entry system on both the front door handles. Press the button to lock and the horn will sound and the mirrors will fold in. And just put your hand behind the handle to unlock. Of our fuel filler door on the driver's side and take a look at our rear wheels same size tires back here but still some pretty large brake rotors got our shark fin antenna up top as well as the panoramic moonroof We have full LED lighting back here, so your brake lamps, the turn signals, as well as the rear fog lamps, they are all LED powered. We have parking sensors again that span the rear bumper, just like the front. Some very nice rear bumper trim, as well as a couple of exhaust outlets. As far as badging, we have the Q4 all-wheel drive badging, the typical Alfa Romeo, as well as the Julia badging. And under here we also have the reversing camera and two buttons, one to open the trunk and one to lock the car. Okay, so as far as the interior goes, we have four different color choices. Of course, we do have the full black leather interior, actually the extended leather interior on this one. You can choose between a black, a saddle, a red, or an ivory colored interior, which is pretty cool. And you can choose between two different speaker systems, this 14 speaker Harman Kardon setup, or the standard eight speaker setup. But as far as the door panel goes, you have this nice extended leather even on the tops of the door sills. And that continues all the way down to your door rest. And then down here we have soft to the touch plastic. Over here we have nice trim as well as your door handle lock unlock. We also have your window lockout for the children, your normal window controls, and your mirror controls. You do have two speakers on the door and a little storage cubby over here. You have a nice stainless steel sill plate that embroiders the Alfa Romeo name. Our pedals down below with the nice aluminum. We have a trunk release button over here and the hood release right there. A little storage pocket, felt line. We also have our lighting controls as well as a few other controls too. So we have our gauge dimmer, our, our headlights and fog lights. You can turn on and off our parking sensors with this and on and off our start stop with this button. You can also see the release just a little bit better for the tilt telescoping steering wheel. 
some pretty nice air vents. And our powered uh, front sport seats, which are absolutely beautiful. We have the Alfa Romeo emblem stamped on the headrest, as well as stitching pretty much everywhere on this seat, even in the center, all around the side bolstering. Very nice perforated leather seat. You also have leg extensions that you can move back and forth. And here are all your controls. So you can move the seat back and forth, uh, the fore and aft for the uh, backrest. You have three person memory. You also have four way lumbar. And then you have these two buttons here to relax and uh, increase the amount of side bolstering. Okay, so here's the key fob you get when you purchase an Alfa Romeo. It's a pretty nice, uh, significant key fob. It's pretty heavily weighted and nice amount of quality to it. You have the metal accents going on the side and then you have all the buttons on this side here. We have the Alfa Romeo uh, circular logo over here and then Alfa Romeo kind of spelled out in cursive, which is pretty nice. You have the panic alarm, trunk release, remote start, lock, unlock buttons up here. And you also have a physical key on the inside. You just pinch the two tabs right here where my thumb and pointer finger is. The back of the key will slide out and then you'll have the uh, physical key on the inside in case you need to use that. This car of course does have push button ignition. Just put your foot on the brake and hit the steering wheel mounted button. Okay, so let's start off the interior here with the steering wheel. And of course, most of the changes here for the 2020 model year are gonna be found in the interior. So lots of refinements, everything that you touch, or most of the things that you touch have been improved. Just the general feel of things and look of things have been improved for the 2020 model year on the interior. And one of those things, of course, is the steering wheel. You have this new addition of the perforations on the side as well as some gloss black going around your buttons as well as a little bit of remapping of your buttons as well but as far as they go on the steering wheel you kind of have all of your cruise control and some driver's assistance functions on the steering wheel so we have your adaptive cruise control and you can also set your distance and then the rest for your uh, normal cruise control you of course have your engine start stop button on the steering wheel some nice stitching on the inside as well as this little uh, sport trim right here down at the bottom. It's a nice metallic color. We also have all of your sort of media controls on the right side. So we have Bluetooth telephone controls, voice commands, audio volume, and also skipping between your different uh, radio stations or your different track. Behind the steering wheel mounted to the column, which is very nice. That's how I like it at least is these beautiful, very large um, shift paddles. It's gonna give you a very nice click when you click them into gear. Obviously you have the plus and the minus, and they are mounted to the column, which is awesome. We also have behind here, we have the turn signals as well as your uh, lane keeping assist. You could turn that on and off with a button at the end of the stalk right here. So again, we have the turn signals, the high beams, and also over here we have our uh, windshield wiper controls. And again, part of the extended leather package is the full leather dashboard. So very nice quality, very soft, and you get some nice stitching that goes across the edge and a little bit up towards the windshield cowl. And down here we see now a little bit of an update with the whole infotainment display. So they changed it up just a little bit. It is now touchscreen. 
and it's a little bit of a different home screen. Uh, there's a few uh, other little different things too that I'll point out. But this is kind of your home screen here. It gives you three quadrants, one for your radio, one for your nav, and one for your phone. You can also swipe and get even more things such as your driver's assistance. You can also go into your climate functions and performance pages, as well as get some various vehicle information such as your servicing, uh, calling, and then uh, all of your different settings. So we can go back and start on our radio screen where we have our Sirius XM that we can activate if you'd like. You can press this button, it'll change the source to FM or whatever you like. We also have your different tuning right here. So we could slide this back and forth and do our uh, tuning there. Go back. And then we also have our favorites and our station list over there as well. Going back to home, we have our nav screen. Nice large uh, map here. We can input our destination right here. You could either type it in or speak it through the voice commands. Nice map. You could see you have points of interest and it is pretty responsive. Also, one thing I'd like to point out on the touchscreen, it's kind of like a matte surface instead of like a glossy surface that'll collect a lot of fingerprints. So as you can see, I'm moving my finger around on the screen quite a bit and really no fingerprints, which is pretty nice. Going on over to our phone screen, not going to display a whole lot because I don't have my phone connected. We have our driver's assistance menu over here, which will display all of our, um, all of our different driver's assistance. You can adjust sensitivity and different features on each one. Very nice that they give you that custom ability. We also have our climate control here. Pretty neat to see that you can control the climate through the screen and as well through some physical buttons down below. Of our temperatures to either side, fan speed on the bottom, and different uh, air zones. We could also access our uh, seats and steering wheel heating controls through that screen as well. Swiping over, we have our performance pages, which is pretty awesome. We can choose to see, choose to see what we'd like, and we can go into our technical cages, or our gauges, which will display our oil pressure, boost pressure, and real-time torque. Everything in real time, of course. As you can see, I'll hit the gas pedal a little bit, and those gauges will start to move. We have consumption history, which will kind of give you like a bar graph to see how you're, how economically you're driving. And it'll show you your miles per gallon. We also have our efficient drive that kind of scores you on how economically you're driving, as you can see. And then we can also see what's going on with our all-wheel drive function. That's a pretty neat screen there that the previous model year Julius did not have and I'm glad they added that. We have our vehicle information. So you can check our oil level. And we also have our different drive modes over there. Of our owner's manual you can check the oil as well as your tire pressures. And we also have assistance calling and um, roadside assistance and whatnot. Then we also have our settings here. Each one you click on it will give you a different uh, nice little animation on the screen there too. So I'll just go into our uh, system settings quick so that you can see what they offer there. And also our infotainment settings. Also, have a pro projection mode that has to do with the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which this car does have. And we could also go into the instrument cluster warning, where you can choose to select different um, 
displays in here such as the G meter or our different um, gauges in the center as you can see there. Speaking of our gauges I actually forgot to show you we have our temperature gauge down below over here and we also have the physical rev counter and speedometer. In the center we have a digital display which will change up a little bit between your driving modes but it will show you general information such as your driver's assistance, uh, a digital speedometer as well as your uh, speed limit on the particular road we're on. Then we also have your fuel gauge to the right. That pretty much does it for both the LCD screens in this car. We're now moving down south we have a couple of air vents with our turn uh, our four way flashers in the center. We also have our physical climate control buttons over here as well as our heated seats for both the front passengers as well as the heated steering wheel. We have a dual zone climate control so temperature is on the either side and the fan speed in the center. We can select where we want the air to come out with just pressing the button over here. It will come up on the screen on the bottom as you can see in the corners and you can select where you want the air to come out. We also have our defrosters on either side of the uh, fan speed too. So most of the changes on the interior have to do with this space here all the way back to the armrest and so that's where the main part of the changes are. So we have a little bit of a different storage cubby down below it's a little bit deeper than before with a USB inlet as well as a 12 volt power outlet. So as you can see pretty nice storage cubby. We also have a little bit different designed cup holders with the gloss black going around. And over here is where it really starts to change. So we have the electronic parking brake over here which this area is completely different than before. Parking brake is active when the white light is on and we can deactivate it by putting our foot on the brake, pressing it down and to activate again foot on the brake and pick it up. We have a new electronic shifter which just feels a lot nicer in the hand than the before models. Uh, so it's a lot easier or a lot better feeling to change into different gears now. We have a little unlock at the back which you need to press in to make any gear changes. So we can go straight up into reverse. You can see that our backup camera pulls up as well as our parking sensors. And before in the previous Julia's the backup camera is just a little bit smaller and I like the fact that they made it a little bit bigger so that you could see what's going on behind you. Now not pressing the release on the back and pressing it down will get you into neutral and then pressing in the release and down will get you into drive. We also have the manual mode which you're going to go back and forth between shifting here or on the paddle shifters. And putting in the park is as easy as just pressing the top of the shifter. We have a nice little Italian logo right there at the base of the shifter. Very nice attention to detail. A little tiny storage pocket over here. I guess you could put change. Also down here we have the three different knobs. This one is for your different driving modes. We have the DNA. D stands for dynamic, N for natural, and A for advanced efficiency. So they do give you some pretty neat little animations on the screen when you go between them. So there's the dynamic, the uh, normal, and the advanced efficiency. Then also since we have the sport package when you're in dynamic mode, the uh, active suspension is activated and it'll ride a little bit rougher. But if you want it still to be in dynamic mode and you don't want that harsh ride, you just press the button and it'll go back into a soft uh, damper mode. Over here we have the volume knob as well as skipping between your different tracks. And you could also press the top just to turn the radio off. We also have a little bit of a different design uh, selector here for the display up here so it is also a touch screen but then you could also configure it with the rotary dial as well as the home button and the settings button at the back. Then you also have little uh, selections on the north, south, east, and west, I guess you could say, of the controller. We 
also have a little storage cubby here, and then you could open up the center console to reveal a little bit of storage under there, as well as some um, connections. So Alfred Mayo really got you hooked up, no matter what kind of plugins you have. Uh, you, they pretty much have it all. So you have the USB, the aux, and the USB-C. Taking a look up here, we have our auto dimming uh, day and night mode mirror, and you can turn that off if you like with the power button there. We also have our Stenner stack, which has a bunch of controls for your interior lighting, which kind of just eases on, and they are all LED lighting. We have SOS controls uh, and some more lighting controls as well. We also have some buttons up here for your sunroof and sunshade. So we have two separate sun shades. This first one is powered, and the second one is manual. You can see the little lip there, and we'll get back there and we'll open it up for you. But we have the sun shade control right here on the left. You press that, it'll open up to about there to a normal opening. Then you can press it once more, and it'll go back all the way. Pretty nice oversized sunroof. As you can see with the back portion open, it'll look really nice. You could vent it open with this button or just slide it all the way back with this button here. And I'd like to show you just a little bit. The sunroof uh, shade is fabric. It doesn't cover 100% of the light, but it is black. So it does cover most of it. And up here, along with the black uh, sunroof, Cover. We also have a full black headliner as well. Taking a look down here, we have these nice little visors with a mirror and a little light. We also fold them over to cover the side, and they also do extend back and forth to cover all the light. And you could also see the garage door home links on the face of the visor here. And to finish it off, we also have a grab handle. So that pretty much does it for the front of the Julia. Actually, we could take a look at the passenger area quick. See, we have the air vent and some nice metalwork trim. Let's open up the glove box. We have the felt-lined storage area and plenty of room for your books and whatnot in there. And it is all illuminated in there, too. Also, the passenger seat is fully powered as well. But at this point in the video, I'm going to do adjust the driver's seat to a suitable and comfortable driving position for myself. I am 5 foot 10 uh, tall, and we'll see how much room we have in the back seat. Okay, so the extended leather package treats the rear cabin too with the full leather rear upper door cards there. And it also, of course, does continue down to the door rest as well with the soft touch plastic down below too. And a couple of speakers there as well. You have the window control as well as the lock unlock control and your door handle. So hopping in, it is actually pretty roomy back here, so not too bad leg room. It's not exactly a huge car, but it's not tiny either. It's a really pretty good size here, so I have a couple of inches of leg room. As far as amenities back here, you have the little map pockets on both the seats. You have your air vents that you can move all around, and you also have a USB charger back here pretty large drivetrain home so I wouldn't suggest sticking three people back here they'd probably be pretty uncomfortable but everything you seem to touch has just had a huge improvement over the first couple years of the Julia there 
And you heard me talking about the rear portion of the sunroof. You could just open that up like so. Then you have a true panoramic sunroof in a car this size. Not a lot of cars uh, at this size have a panoramic sunroof. And when you're sitting back here, Alfa Romeo really did a good job to give you quite a bit of side support. You can see this cushion here. And it almost makes you feel like you're sitting in a bucket seat back here. Extremely comfortable in the back seats, I can tell you that. I have a nice little headrest that you could uh, fold up and down. And you also have some lighting up here above your head. Which kind of fade on and off. And you also have a nice little armrest that folds down with a couple of cup holders. Very beautiful outlook on the interior here. Definitely designed by an Italian company. You can definitely tell that. But for the next part, let's see what happens in the trunk. So before we get into the trunk, as I mentioned earlier, there are two buttons underneath the trunk lid. Now the one to the left locks the vehicle. So if you say if you're getting things out of the trunk and you just want to walk away, you hid your key fob somewhere in your purse or something and you can't find it, you just press the button right there to lock the car. And the one to the right will pop open the trunk. So not too bad back here, not the biggest trunk in the world, but definitely not the smallest. Definitely enough room for grocery getting or just the everyday stuff. The seats will actually fold down, you can see the two splits, a 40, 20, 40, if you'd like. And the folders are back here in the trunk, just pull the two levers and the seats will fold flat. We have some extensions to either side. And we also have our carpeted floor mats, the front license plate bracket back here as well. If we fold this down, we have our battery back here. Hence why this car handles so good, it has a really good uh, weight distribution. If we fold this up, we have some things like our, uh, our tow hook. And I believe we also have the inflation kit for the tires as well. So we have two handles, one to each side to close the trunk. Okay, so opening the lid to the 15.3 gallon fuel tank. Looks like according to the EPA, you should be seeing right around 23 miles a gallon in the city and 31 on the highway, which is pretty cool. And just keep in mind, this is the all wheel drive version. The rear wheel drive is bound to get a little bit of a better fuel economy at least. We have the typical cap and tether system. And then you can also hang the cap right here so it doesn't um, scratch your beautiful paint. We also have the sticker right here which recommends that you use high octane fuel. So unfortunately this video has to come to an end since I have shown you all of the features I possibly could in a timely manner about the 2020 Alfa Romeo Giulia. I hope you have enjoyed this car just as much as I have because I know it has put a huge smile on my face and I hope you stay with us here at NNT Auto Reviews for future in-depth walk around videos.